The mere mention of his name would evoke fear in the heart of every devil, wrongdoer, and oppressor. He effortlessly balanced power and humility, dominance and justice, decisiveness and compassion. Superpowers fell to their knees before him, and the splendors of the world were at his feet, yet he shunned it all and continued his voyage to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His name is second only to Abu Bakr in the golden list of the ten guaranteed paradise. He is of course none other than Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. Once a camel escaped the Muslim treasury, and rather than summon a stable boy to retrieve the camel, Umar without a moment's hesitation chased after the camel under the scorching blaze of an Arabian sun. He understood he was ultimately responsible for the Muslim treasury, and he would be answerable before Allah for it. It was said to him, you have humbled the leaders who will come after you, O Umar. That is to say, his action was not common practice for a leader, and that in doing so, he had set a difficult precedent of humility for future Muslim leaders. Umar's reply, however, was wonderful. It demonstrated his awe-inspiring level of consciousness. He said, Ya Abal Hassan, father of Hassan, La talumni, don't blame me. Fawaladi ba'atha Muhammadan bin Nubuwa. I swear by the one who sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with prophethood. Law anna anaqan ukhidat bishati il furati la ukhida biha umaru yom al qiyama. If an animal was to be taken by any harm next to the river Euphrates, i.e., miles away from Medina, he said, I would be accountable for it on the day of judgment. Despite leading an empire that stretched across the known world, Umar did not consider it beneath him to personally tend to his flock. He was once seen with his head close to the ground, kindling a fire for a hungry family in the middle of the night as it smoke passed through his beard. The head of state then fed the children with his own hands until they were satiated and they fell asleep. The children's mother looked with appreciation at this friendly stranger and she found no way to express her admiration other than by saying, Jazakallahu khayran, anta awla al amri min Umar. May Allah reward you with goodness. You are worthier of being the caliph than Umar, not knowing that her visitor that evening was in fact Umar, the Caliph himself. When discussing this giant of a man, where should a person begin? Should one start with listing his conquests, or his sheer consciousness of Allah? Or should we describe his justice and equity? Should we recall his command and courage? Should we recall his rejection of this material world, or his knowledge and Iman? Let us perhaps begin with his first tentative steps to Islam. It all began with dua. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once called upon Allah saying, Allahumma a'izz al-Islam bi'ahabbi hadayni rajulayni ilayk. O Allah, I ask you to bring honor and dignity to Islam by guiding one of the two men whom you love more, Umar ibn al-Khattab and Abu Jahl. Ibn Umar, who is the narrator of this narration, he said, the most beloved of these two men to Allah was Umar. Umar described his journey to Islam when he said, Before I became a Muslim, I was a man who loved wine. I would drink it regularly. There was a particular place in Mecca where the men of Quraysh would gather to drink together. On one particular night, I went looking for my friends so that we could drink together as usual, but I did not find any of them. So I said to myself, perhaps I should go and see so and so. He may have wine with him. I went to him, but he was not around either. I then said to myself, well, I might as well pay the Kaaba a visit and circumambulate around it seven times. So I went and upon arriving, I saw the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam praying facing Palestine. Of course, this was before the direction of the prayer was changed, but he had kept the Kaaba ahead of him. So I said to myself, why not listen to what he is saying in his prayer? But I knew that if I was to go near him, this would alarm him. So I stealthily sneaked up to the Kaaba from the opposite side and I hid myself under its curtain. Omar says, now that I was beneath the curtain, I gradually started to make my way around the Kaaba until I was face to face with the Prophet وسلم, as he prayed, with the curtain of the Kaaba being the only barrier between me and him. At that moment, the Prophet وسلم, was reciting Surah Al Haqqa from the Quran. Umar says, I said to myself, This must be poetry, just like the people of Quraysh said it was. Just as this thought came to me, 
Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam happened to recite the verse where Allah says وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ شَاعِرْ قَلِيلًا مَا تُؤْمِنُونَ This is not the word of a poet but little do you believe. As if struck by a thunderbolt, Umar froze in his tracks. He thought then this must be the word of a soothsayer. And the Prophet continued with the next verses وَلَا بِقَوْلِ كَاهِنْ قَلِيلًا مَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Nor is it the word of a soothsayer. Little do you remember. تَنْزِيلٌ مِنْ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ It is a revelation from the Lord of the worlds. Umar then said, فَلَمَّا سَمِعْتُ الْقُرْآنَ رَقَّ لَهُ قَلْبِي وَبَكَيْتُ وَدَخَلَنِي الْإِسْلَامِ When I heard these words, my heart softened and I began to cry and the love of Islam fell into my heart. Umar said, I stayed exactly where I was until he finished praying and left. But I followed him. He heard my footsteps, so he turned and recognized me. He thought that I had come to harm him. So he addressed me with firmness and he said, What brings you here at this time of the night, O Umar? Umar's response was, I have come to believe in Allah and his messenger and that which has come from Allah. The Messenger وسلم, praised Allah and made dua for him and he asked Allah to keep him steadfast and the Prophet وسلم, patted him gently on his chest three times and he said each time Allahumma akhrij ma fi sadrihi min ghillin wa abdilhu iman Oh Allah, I ask you to remove any ill feelings from his heart and replace it with iman and from this day forth, Umar dropped his whip along with every other evil sentiment that he had previously harbored towards Islam Umar's acceptance of Islam immediately benefited the da'wah in Mecca. A personality like his was not to be taken lightly. And this is why Suhaib al-Rumi, one of the earliest companions who embraced Islam, he said, Lama aslam Umar, when Umar became a Muslim, ظهر al-Islam, Islam increased in prevalence. وَدُعَيَ إِلَيْهِ alania, And we would call towards it now publicly. وَجَلَسْنَا حَوْلَ الْبَيْتِ حِلَقًا And we would sit in circles around the Kaaba. And we would circumambulate around it. And we would retaliate when spoken to nastily. Umar's conversion to Islam was transformative. From a hedonistic man chasing the fleeting pleasures of endless socializing, bin drinking and idle talking, Umar became the legend we all know and celebrate today. His story serves as a reminder that it is not people who make Islam great, but it is Islam that carves out greatness in people.